Good afternoon, viewers. This is the Angry Astronaut with your latest update from the FAA. Over the weekend, I submitted a request to my friend Stephen Culm, a public relations person with the FAA who's been really helpful as of late as to whether or not SpaceX had actually submitted their mishap investigation report because they're not going to be able to launch until that's actually submitted. Here's the response that I got 22 hours ago. Quote, SpaceX has submitted its Starship Super Heavy OFT2 mishap investigation report to the FAA for agency review. A return to flight of the Starship Super Heavy vehicle is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. And then he referred me to an interesting link that describes what mishap investigations actually involve. Our safety inspectors monitor pre-operational, operational, and post-operational phases of FAA-regulated commercial space transportation activities which can impact public safety and the safety of property. Pre-operational activities include the qualification, installation, and testing of flight safety system components and the mission readiness reviews, safety compliance and support reviews, safety working groups and planning discussions, and operational rehearsals, simulations, and exercises. Then the operational activities include monitoring countdown procedures, operator communication processes, procedural execution, vehicle processing and preparation, safety critical operator launch site personnel interaction, identifying non-nominal or public safety issues, and then finally Post-operational activities include monitoring of post-operational reviews, post-flight re-entry evaluations, lessons learned discussions, documenting observed compliance and non-compliance, and finally communicating and coordinating with operators to correct non-compliance issues. A licensee shall allow access by and cooperate with federal officers or employees or other individuals authorized by the FAA to observe any activities of the licensee or of the licensee's contractors or subcontractors associated with the conduct of a licensed activity. We verify that you are operating in accordance with the representations contained in your application. We must also ensure that no one is engaged in commercial space transportation illegally, that is, without a license. So that's a long-winded description of everything that they do, but there's a number of questions that are asked too. For example, what is the FAA's safety oversight role for commercial space transportation? Well, they're responsible for protecting the public during commercial space transportation launch and re-entry operations. Public safety is at the core of FAA licensing or permitting process of the safety inspections conducted before, during, and after a launch or re-entry, and of the investigation and corrective actions following a mishap event. And what constitutes a mishap? Well, it varies somewhat because there's two sets of regulations, one obviously later than the other, and some launch providers are grandfathered into the older regulations. However, by March of 2026, apparently all launch providers are going to be subject to the newest regulations. However, according to the FAA regulations, here are the things that might happen that would constitute a mishap. Serious injury or fatality, obviously that hasn't happened. Malfunction of a safety critical system. Failure of a safety organization, safety operation, or safety procedure. High risk of causing a serious or fatal injury to any spaceflight participant, crew, government astronaut, or member of the public. Substantial damage to property not associated with the activity, unplanned substantial damage to property associated with the activity, unplanned permanent loss of the vehicle, impact of hazardous debris outside of defined areas, 
and failure to complete a launch or re-entry as planned. Well, there's a lot of conditions there that constitute a mishap, and every time we have a Starship launch that involves the loss of the booster, the loss of the orbiter, or anything else, that's going to require a mishap investigation. Now, following a mishap, an FAA licensed operator, in other words, SpaceX, has to implement its mishap plan, activate emergency response services as necessary to protect public safety and property, contain and minimize the consequences of a mishap, preserve data and physical evidence for later investigation, report the mishap to the FAA's Washington Operations Center, and file a preliminary written report to the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation within five days of the event. Now, obviously, all of these things have happened, but the next thing is a more detailed mishap report, which has also now been submitted to the FAA. Once that's done, it generally doesn't take too long for the FAA to come up with their recommendations on what needs to be done before SpaceX can fly again. Now, the FAA probably has corrective actions in spite of the fact that this flight went pretty well compared to OFT-1. However, a new license modification needs to be made or license application before SpaceX can fly again. But that particular application application has already been filed according to my contacts with the FAA as well. In other words, most of the work, as near as I can tell, has already been taken care of. The FAA is now evaluating the modified submission and working with SpaceX to complete all outstanding items, which means it seems to me that some final I's are being dotted and T's are being crossed, and SpaceX should be able to return to flight very soon, certainly in February. February. Once again, I think that we need to appreciate how rapidly the FAA is approving all of these things, how rapidly these investigations are pushing forward. It's very easy for us to be critical of this organization based on the things that they may have done in the past, but I think their processes are getting a hell of a lot better, especially when one considers that SpaceX is launching the largest rocket in human history, by far, less than 10 kilometers away from heavily populated areas. That, in theory, could be a very dangerous thing to do. The FAA could clamp down on SpaceX a lot more than they're currently doing to try to ensure public safety, but instead I think that they are striking a very reasonable compromise to allow SpaceX to fly as often as possible. And once again, I'm making these comparisons based on the types of restrictions I've seen over here in Europe, where they would never allow a rocket as big as Star ship to fly from a Western European spaceport. So I think we all need to keep that in mind. Just be a little bit patient. And next month, I think we are going to see an utterly fantastic test flight where hopefully Starship will be able to complete a successful orbital trajectory. And oh yeah, the tattoo off the table now, because after all, Vulcan made it to space. Vulcan made it to orbit. Well, Vulcan actually got a lot further than that before Starship did. And that's a good thing, because it means that competition in American commercial space flight is back in a big way, and that's gonna be good for everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. It's very important to the future of my channel. And stay tuned because I'll be bringing you all the details of OFT3 when that launch happens at Boca Chica. Really looking forward to it. So in the meantime, stay angry about space.